Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to end the video with another paid request, this time from Lucas. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, randomness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, Lucas wanted me to react to four 2003 Ninja Turtle episodes as in commentaries. I've seen them before many times because I'm a big fan of the show. Wish it had an official release. So this one is called Fallen Angel. Where we're introduced to the character Angel who is old friends with Casey Jones. Get a bit of a Hell in a Cell cage match at the end involving various characters. So uh, the best bet you don't find these episodes now is on YouTube. Because there is... There was an official release way, way, way back in the day, but all those DVDs are long, long out of print. Nickelodeon, I think, pretty much owns them. They don't do anything with this show. So, again, YouTube is their best bet. And this ep these episodes are on YouTube. So, it's called Fallen Angel. It's eight, 19 minutes, 44 seconds is the one I'm watching. 3, 2, 1, pressing play. Now, like a lot of episodes, it starts off with a bit of narration, in this case from Tacey Jones, and pretty much setting up events that's going to happen later in the episode. Just give sort of a taste of people, a taste for people. Kind of like, this is what, this is what there is to look forward to. And that big guy there is Hun, who was created specifically for this cartoon. He was not in the comics. They had another character named Hun, I want to say in the 2012 cartoon, but looked absolutely different. This Hun is the leader of the Purple Dragons. He is a subordinate to the Shredder. He's a big strong guy that takes the turtles a, a bear combination to, to fight off. Pretty you know, decent addition of a villain. Him and Casey Jones definitely have a personal beef against one another. Now this guy, I believe his name is like Dragon Face because he's got a dragon on his face. And he's kind of a subordinate to Hun. This girl with the purple hair, her name is Angel. I don't think she was in previous Ninja Turtle stuff. I could be wrong on that. Like I said, she knows Casey Jones, as we're going to find out a bit. And I said before I say it again, like, I grew up with this show back in 2003. I was there when it premiered and taped it on the VHS tape because at that point I was working the early days of Target where you had to go in like at 4, 3 in the morning, sometimes 2 in the morning, and unload the trucks and get stuff stopped as quick as possible and so I would tape this just this come out in the morning because I didn't want to miss it and just enjoyed the the use of shadows the animation uh, it's much more of an action driven show and just loved it ever since I love that yes there are silliness parts in it but it's still much more of an action show that seemed for a bit older for older kids it was just great to see the turtles as badasses using martial arts and getting their moments to shine. Like here, like Raphael's a cool two tick. I forget what uh, maneuver that is. Has both legs at the same time jumping and hits both of them. I said, Raphael is a badass in the show. A lot of nice, cool little moments of him kicking ass and being a fan of the character was nice to see. And. I said I love the way they did Casey Jones. I think he looks like Casey Jones. He sounds like how Casey Jones should sound. Uh, other than Elias Coteus in the 1990 movie, he's this is my favorite interpretation of Casey Jones. I've said this before. It definitely captures that Jab Burton, Big Trouble China, a little bit of feel, which I believe was an inspiration for Casey. One of them that Tim Neesman said. Although I find this Angel character a bit bitchy. Of course, nowadays she'd probably be an SJW with the purple hair, saying all men suck, and I'll probably putting shit on TikTok or something. So she's a bit bitchy, and 
I can't say I like the character. I mean, she's a hindrance. She's the reason they're in this shit in the first place. Fucking little twerp. The goddamn hair that I'm ready to jump real with. But this is still a fun episode. It's fun to see what happens in the second half of the show. Because T.C. Jones tries to help her out, gets caught, and they have to save him. And pretty much the turtles have to be in human disguises and clothing. Two of them have to go in the cage and fight some bad guys. Almost like a bit of a Hell in a Cell show case. Ready for fucking jit. J.R. Jim Ross to... He's broken it in half! <laughs> Three finger salute. How about the one finger? Yes, I want three soft drinks. You know, I want three french fries. I said, really nice usage of shadows throughout this show, in particular the first four seasons. And the animation is pretty good too for its time, for being on uh, the Fox Kids. You know, they wanted this to. You know, Peter Laird was the main guy behind this because Kevin Eastman had gone off to do Heavy Metal magazine, and she was he was married to Julie Strain and trying to do Heavy Metal 2000 movie, which sucked, and just concentrating on that while Peter Laird. Peter Laird carried this franchise. So, they, I mean, they did credit where credit's due. He helped usher in what's become my favorite cartoon, which is this one. <laughs> nice moments for Casey Jones to shine here. Love the look of the hockey mask, too. Like, that's Casey Jones, not this bullshit in the... 2016 Super Chuds produced by Michael Bay where a Stephen Amell with short hair and he's a cop and whatever the hell they tried to do. I said T.C. Jones and Hun have a personal grudge because Hun helped burn down his father's place of business and like, they don't mention that Hun killed his father Part of me wants to feel like that's what an intention or maybe they want to have a hidden meaning or maybe that's something they want to do initially but they never went through with it. But uh, does they show a flashback it just shows that his father's store has been burned down. <clears throat> there we have the lair. Then this is where Mighty screws up Donatello's invention. Also able to showcase that you could maneuver this with a remote control, which would be utilized in the future. <laughs> Set something up for the payoff. I think the voices work rather well for the characters in this. Some people get annoyed by Mighty. I was never annoyed by it. I think especially the voice of Donatello worked very well. As well as, uh, like all the voices of the turtles work well. Man, fucking killed his punching bag. Sons of bitches. <laughs> so I like to tell his dialogue. Splinter giving praise, as well as. I want to see this fucking shit ever again. <laughs> so is that just Raphael hit Mighty? Donnie does as well. Right, they don't get Casey Jones for the sex dungeon. I guess that show a bit of bruising, but a bit weird, kind of like circular polka dot. <laughs> What is he, Typhoid Mary or something? Like all these damn polka dots on him. I, I guess it's meant to be bruises, but... 
That is for them. That's the way the show taste bruises is these. I guess so. I just replicate punches. To be fair. I just, you know, for a cartoon, it, it works for what it needs to be. This guy definitely took some steroids. And I was leaving to go score some more steroids. <laughs> it's like Sven Thorson from uh, The Running Man. Got to go score some steroids. Fuck you one, you little squirrel. You got me in this shit. Give me the fuck out. Of course you can't fucking do it. You failed. Cry, little sister. You fucked up your brother. No, that not brother sister, but anyway. You fucked up. You fucked up. But it is a shame that Nickelodeon won't do jack shit with this cartoon. I mean, really re-release it on some way, shape, or form. A Blu-ray set, for fuck's sake. There would be a lot of people that would buy it. And if you're not going to do it, then give it to someone who will. Give it to someone who fucking will. Don't just let it fucking sit there. Because I'm like, well, who are you going to give it to? Shaw Factory? No. Like, Shaw Factory got, what, Elf? The sitcom? They haven't done shit with it. Like, they haven't released any Blu-rays of it. That was a great reveal shot of Raphael coming out of the shadows. There was some nice lighting there. And the episode moves at a good pace. I mean, we're over halfway through. And here we get the, the human clothing, which is a nice different aesthetic for the look of these characters. <laughs> which I imagine, like, they don't ever wear shoes, so just how much their feet would hurt. And all the shit around the city they'd be stepping on, but... I just didn't feel the need to have shoes. <laughs> Even if you have to make them by hand. Why the guy doesn't notice them having green hands. I mean, you would think, I mean, you could still clearly see their face in green hands, but apparently... <laughs> that's probably that would be my favorite line of the episode this is an ugly convention wow then you should feel right at home Mikey I like the little reaction like with his mouth Mikey's mouth and this is a nice little tidbit of Mikey and Raph doing the the, the ball see little moments like that are nice to, to work into the showcase of the family even a little bit with Donnie, like, of all the turtles, like, he's the one that wants to blend in, and... <laughs> Although, to be honest, he probably has the best outfit with the white. Of the four of them, Donnie definitely has the best outfit. Dr. Imagine just all the blood rushing to your head if you're upside down for however, how, however long it was. I don't know how the fuck he fit those large ass size in those pockets. <laughs> like, see how big those size are? There's no way they fit in those damn pockets. Just as he pulled them, he didn't pull them like from under the shirt. He pulled them from inside the pockets. Like, how the hell did he do that? The wonders of animation. See, this is on top of the hell in the cell. Where's Jr? Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold. <laughs> Supreme is Donnie and Mike Diodondo save Casey while Raph and Leo don't be the distraction. <laughs> yeah, the one issue I have with the... This is a you know, nitpicks as much as I love the show. The music, for the most part, is always garbage on the show. It's my least favorite part is the music. I mean... Like, the 80s cartoon had some really good music, but the this... I wish somehow there was a way to just replace all the music with getting just better music. 
not too bad designs of the, the villains in the cage. Reminds me a little bit of the Warriors from the 70s. Or just, you know, stuff I would play in video games like Final Fight. Or maybe video games like Streets of Rage or something. So nice moments of Raphael kicking some ass. I'm always a, a fan of that. Nice little like drop kit thing there. <laughs> Smile, you're on candy camera. And they do that effect a lot. Definitely inspired by anime type where when they get a certain bit of action or jump in and you have the background swirl to involve like speed and all sorts of stuff. You see that a lot in anime. So there's definitely points that anime is influenced upon onto this show. Which I thought was cool. I thought it was a nice little different detail. And that's the thing, I like the 80s cartoon. It's what got me into the Ninja Turtles. It's what got me... <laughs> I love that. Mikey gives him a present. His baseball bat and Casey just tears up. <laughs> like, that's humor. That was pretty funny. <clears throat> At least Leo here is not just a fucking hypocritical dick like he was in that 2007 CGI. That's why this is... Along with the 1990 and 91 movie, this is my favorite interpretation of Leo. Just doesn't feel as much of a dick. But yeah, the 80s, like 90s cartoon got me into these characters is what made me a fan. But then it was seeing more the live action movies and you know, all sorts of that made me a bigger fan. The 80s cartoon, it's still fun to watch, but it doesn't hold up like it did. It didn't age as well as other stuff, which is why this has become my favorite. Because it's more of an action-driven show. Like I say I keep mentioning like the way the shadows work in the scene. There's a nice little bit of darker atmosphere to it all. And yeah, that's a reference to a previous episode where I think it was the Invisible Ninjas, the Way of I think the Way of Invisibility. They not they were fighting Raph and Casey. Raph got taken to hide out. Raph escaped, and Hun mentions, "Yeah, I let you escape so we could follow you." So yeah, it's more of that little anime action. These guys did rough a bit more. <clears throat> but you know, you want to show that the villain's a bit more intimidating and strong. So if Raph had a little bit of a moment to beat him up, and then he got thrown. So then Leo gets a little bit of a moment, but then they're both going to get hit here. And Donnie and Mike, you don't have a moment. So it's, you know, it's nice that you know, each tear get in the moment to shine. But they still want to showcase that this is an intimidating villain because he's going to be used in the future. Now, of course, because you know, it's Tacey Jones needs to get the, the final bit. The final mark. With his uh, Jose Conseco bat. Well, it's not that, but might as well be. Yeah, not the fuck out. On that reference from before. There it is, the remote control. There you go. <laughs> Build it up. Pay it off here. 
Angel should let him finish him off. Brain his ass. A little bit of reference to an earlier conversation. Although you should let Casey Jones finish the job. This would have saved a lot of headache. And wow, we're at the, almost uh, at the end of the episode. So yeah, that was a uh, fallen angel. I mean, I don't really care about the angel character. I find her a bit annoying and bitchy, but some nice bits with Casey Jones. Nice usage of different type of clothing for the turtles. Different look and aesthetic. A couple lines that made me laugh. A couple fun action bits. <laughs> Nice little brotherly moment there between Raph and Mighty and <laughs> Still a fun, you know, a fun episode. Not too much to complain about that, so Yeah. Showcase a little bit more of Hun and formidable villain. Hell in the Cell has a couple of nice little bits of action there. Nice use of shadows. They give a more of a ninja action feel to it. And overall, again, fun episode. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later.